Hello, hello, my lovely, beautiful people. Welcome to the Creative Lab. On this video, it's all about how to make your design stand out following the seven principles. The principles of designs are the rules a designer must follow in order to achieve an effective and attractive composition. Design differs in art in which it has to have a purpose. Visually, this functionality is interpreted by making sure an image is the center of attention, the main point. The focus point. You might be thinking, but wait, I thought design was all about creativity. If you're a designer who just started out, you might be tempted to go wild and combine the first five top phrases and colors that cut your eye, believing that you're creating something new and fresh. You probably find yourself with a design that is jumbled, unfinished, or plain. Okay, Oleg. Designers, like any discipline, must follow strict rules that works beneath the surface to make the work stable and balanced. If the design is missing the balance, it will look mm, ineffective and weak. Alright, without further ado, let's walk you through the seven principles of design to make your next project stand out. The first principle is emphasis. What draws the audience attention? Design in a way where you want the audience attention to go first. The main focus, concept of the design. You should ask yourself, what is the first piece of information my audience needs to know? Is it the band or the concert venue? What about the day and the cost of attending? Make a mental outline. Let your brain organize the information and then lay out your design in a way that communicates that order. If the band's name is the most important information, place it in the center or make it the biggest element on the poster. Or you could put it in the strongest, boldest type. Learn about color theory and use strong colors combination to make the band name pop out. Like writing without an outline or building without a blueprint, if you start your composition without a clear idea of what you're trying to communicate, your design will not succeed. Second principle, balance and alignment. Balance and alignment are pretty much what they sound like. They're how you space and place the different elements in your design. So they develop a structure and feel organized and connected. Different elements have different weights a massive circle in a primary color is going to carry more weight than a small dot in a soft pastel. Each element you place on a page has a weight. The weight can come from color, size or texture. Just like you wouldn't put all your furniture in one corner of a room. You can't crowd all your heavy elements in one area of composition. Without balance, your audience will feel as if their eye is sliding off the page. 3. Contrast Contrast creates space and difference between elements in your design. Contrast is what makes the design stand out, makes the design memorable. For that, your background needs to be significantly different from the color of your elements so they work harmoniously together and are readable. If you plan to work with type, understanding contrast is incredibly essential because it means the weight and size of your type are balanced. How will your audience know what is most important if everything is involved? As you seek out examples of really strong effective design, you notice most designs only feature one or two typefaces. That's because contrast can be effectively achieved with two strong fonts or even one strong typeface in different ways. Fourth principle, repetition. It's often said that repetition undefines and strengthens our design. A single shape in isolation could be mistaken for a logo, but the same shape in a set of three, now you're looking at a theme, and that which is repeated is remembered. Being consistent with your color palette and brand voice across multiple designs in another form of repetition that a designer must consider. Repetition can be important beyond one printed product. 
Current packaging design is heavily embracing beautiful illustrated patterns. Anyone thinking about a startup knows one of the first things you need is a strong logo to feature on your website, business cards, social media, and more. Brand identity, another term for reputation. Fifth, proportion is the natural next step after considering empathy, balance, and contrast. As a general rule, similar elements should have similar proportions to create a cohesive look. Proportion is the visual size and weight of elements in a composition and how they relate to each other. Grouping related items can give them importance at a smaller size. Proportion can be achieved only if all elements of your design are well sized and and thoughtfully placed. Once you master alignment, balance, and contrast, proportion should emerge organically. Sick movement. Going back to our concept poster, if you decided the band was the most important piece of information on the page and the venue was the second, how would you communicate that in your audience? Movement doesn't mean motion exactly, but how our eyes travel across a design. Movement gives your design a narrative arc, a logic start and end point. Color can also subtly direct the eye, likewise curve or flowing its shapes. Movement is controlling the elements in our composition so that the eye is led to move from one to the next and the information is properly communicated to your audience. Movement creates the story of the narrative of your work. A band is playing it's at this location, it's at this time, here how you get tickets. The elements above, especially balance, alignment and contrast. If you look at your design and feel your eye gets stuck or focus in just one area, for long, perhaps an element is too big, too bold, or significantly off-center, or maybe not a complementary color. Go back and adjust until everything is in harmony. The last principle is white space. White space the area which is not used. Empty space around the elements in your composition. Often simply giving a composition more room to breathe can upgrade it from mediocre to successful. White space isn't sitting there just doing nothing. It's creating hierarchy and organization. Our brains naturally associate ample white space around an element with importance and luxury. It's telling our eyes that objects in one region are grouped separately from objects elsewhere. Even more exciting, it can communicate an entirely different image or idea from your main design that would reward your audience for engaging with it. How to use principles of design. A design doesn't have to strictly follow these rules to be great. Some absolutely mind-blowing designs ignore one or more principles in order to create eye-catching and effective work. Consider the cover The Bed Moved by Rebecca Schiff, designed by Janet Hansen. This was one of the most lauded book covers of 2016. But did you immediately read the first line as tip? Did your eye jump to the bottom line where the M from Moved is isolated on a different line than the rest of the world? The design is clearly breaking the two rules of movement and alignment. But because of the designer's confidence, use of a bold contrasting color scheme and repetitive structure, your eye is easily guided to the title and author of the book. The important information is communicated. That jarring moment of slight confusion is what makes this design so revolutionary and rewarding. The elements of design should be viewed as moving parts that combine to tell us a story. As you're designing your project, you should be familiarized with these principles. Only then you will be able to break these graphic design rules in order to create your own signature style. Thanks for watching. I hope you find this video helpful. If you would like to be notified on any new video that I release, click the subscribe button here. Don't forget to like and share with your friends. Thank you so much and I hope to see you on the next one.